Justice Audley asks Dangles over AGF, Abubakar Malami. <laughs> it's happening very well. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mr. Abubakar Malami, appears to be in trouble. Like his predecessors, he has been criticized over a long list of issues, including the pending Friday invasion of the official residence of the second most senior justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. The Lent Singh, Abubakar, a Fulani Muslim, was born April 17, according to what he has written down, 1967, in Bonu Kebi, Kebi State in northern Nigeria. He is he is a 1991 90, law graduate from Husman Danfodo University and was called to bar in 1992. He is also an alumni of the University of Meduguri, where he obtained a master's degree in public administration in 1994. As a legal practitioner, he has served in various capacities, including being a state councillor, magistrate, in Kebi State of Nigeria. In 2008, he was admitted into the inner bar and decorated with the Convel title of the Senior Advocate of Nigeria. The 54-year-old lawyer has a romance with politics. His appointment as National Legal Advisor of the Defense Congress for Progressive Change brought him into the limelight. He was also actively involved in the formation of the All Progressive Congress, APC, in 2013. In fact, in 2014, Abubakar Malami contested for the governorship ticket of the All Progressive Congress in Kebi, but stepped down during the party primaries in favor of Atiku Badigo with the emergence of President Muhammadu Buhari. Abubakar was appointed as a Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of the Federation on November the 11th, 2015. The position he holds still dates. The, the occupant of the office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice in Nigeria wears enormous power. For instance, it is his job to advise the government and its officials to act and conduct their business within the limits of the law allocated to them by the Constitution. He is also the border guide on the boundaries and, and the space of influence allocated to the three arms of government under the principles of separation of power. He has the power to institute in any courts of content, judiciary and in civil proceedings, with or without a relator, involving the rights and interests of the public, which he deemed necessary for the enforcement of federal laws and provisions of order and preservations of the public wrongs. He enables the president to fulfill his obligation to the faithful and bears true allegation, allocations of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and to execute and maintain the constitution. All laws made by the National Assembly and in all matters with respect to which the National Assembly has the power to make laws laws. The president depends on the advice and opinion of the attorney general in the, ex in the exercise of the executive power vested on him in accordance with the constitution and the law made by the National Assembly. It is further unraveling job for the AGF to ensure that the president exercises power in the spirit of the necessary balance by the, by the fundamental objective and directive principles of state policies. It is therefore neutral to blame the attorney general and the minister of justice for the act of lawlessness and abuse of power by the government and public authority personnel if they do not carry out their conduct and activities properly. Performing this duty between 2015 and 2021, Abubakar appears to have stepped on many toes and left the premise of the law in carrying and discharging out his duty. In fact, he has constituted new laws in Nigeria with the premise of his job. He has done things that are outside the fundamentals and the reins of leadership 
in Nigeria. For instance, in less than one year in office, Abubakar became a household name, but for all the wrong reasons. Why? He was believed to have advised President Muhammadu Buhari's administration to organize on a predominated ninth raid on the official residence of judiciary officers in the country, including the justice of the Supreme Court under the disguise of fighting corruption. That happened in the wave hour of October 8, 2016, and thereabouts. The affected judges were Justice Adeniyi Ademola because he was from the West, Nandi Ndim, both of the Federal High Court, that is from the Southeast. Abuja Justice Sivanus jo and John Okoro of the Supreme Court Justice and others, all mainly from the South, South, Southeast and Southwest, were all, their home were all boggled for fighting corruption. The most recent one is the River State Supreme Court Justice, Odili, whose home in a pretend of a raid went really wrong. River State, according to the DSS, which carried out the raid, it explained that it was ordered after months of investigation during which they credibly established that the affected judges were involved in questionable financial dealings. An attempt by Abubakar to take away senior people who could question the administration for wrongdoing in the premise of the law, to find them wanting and so that Buhari can operate unhindered. Getting these people involved in anything called crime will give Buhari's administration a free flow to go beyond the premise of the law. Masquerading behind the ordeal to fight back, but Malami denied the allegation and said he was never involved. However, we all know he's the architect. As part of the dispute between Malami and the then EFCC chairman, Ibrahim Mogo, reports came out on July 2020 that Malami and Mogo has clashed over conflict between the seas of assets, notably when Malami authorities want this held. Malami was said to have directed Omojo Nigeria Limited to auction the vessels despite previous theft allegations against the company. This the EFCC boss fought and Malami made sure he was gotten off and get his own there. So when you see Malami, <clears throat> fear that man, he's been known for all the wrong reasons. Any wrong reason you want to talk about, welcome to Malami. And guess what is the one advising Buhari to ensure that, um, you know, there is no one who is against them, who is speaking against them, and they are carrying out whatever they want to do. Listen, guys, it is a wake-up call that these people, Buhari and his cohorts, continue to commit all forms of crimes and atrocities. But guess what? We're not going to sit back, fold our arms, and pretend all is well. They are going to be questioned and brought to book. Leave us a comment. We'd we'll love to hear from you. Please don't forget to like us, share, subscribe, click on the notification button so you can get all our latest news. God bless you. Bye for now.